Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can use the tools located within the tools bar at the top of the Camera Raw dialog box to manipulate your selected Camera Raw image. In this lesson you will examine which tools are available and how to use them to manipulate the preview image shown in this dialog box. The zoom tool is selected by default. This tool lets you click within the preview image to zoom in. You can hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and click the image to zoom out. If you need to temporarily switch to the Hand tool when the Zoom tool is selected, you can hold down either the Control or Spacebar key on your keyboard to temporarily switch the tool. You can temporarily switch to the White Balance tool by holding down the Shift key instead. You can click the Hand Tool button to switch to using the Hand tool by default. The Hand tool is used to scroll and pan the preview image when the magnification level is high enough that you cannot see the entire preview image within the frame provided. You can simply click and drag the preview image when using the hand tool to move the preview image within the frame shown. If you need to temporarily switch to the zoom tool to zoom in when the hand tool is selected, hold down the control key on your keyboard to temporarily switch the tool. If you need to temporarily switch to the zoom tool to zoom out when the hand tool is selected, Hold down the Alt key on your keyboard to temporarily switch the tool. You can temporarily switch to the White Balance tool by holding down the Shift key instead. You can click the White Balance Tool button to switch to using the White Balance tool by default. The White Balance tool is used to set the correct white balance within the photo and thus remove any color cast that may have been applied by improper lighting when the photo was taken. This tool changes the temperature and tint values in the settings panel to make the adjustment. To use this tool, simply click into a place within the preview image that should contain a neutral gray tone to remove any color casts and adjust the color of the whole image. You can use the Crop Tool button to remove unwanted parts of the image. In its most basic use, you can click the Crop Tool button to enable the tool, and then click and drag to draw a bounding box over the part of the preview image that you want to retain. Then click another tool within the tools bar, or press the Enter key on your keyboard to finish cropping the preview image. However, you should also note that this tool has many other settings that you can apply. To apply advanced cropping settings, click and hold down the Crop Tool button until its drop-down menu is displayed. You can then select your cropping settings from the drop-down before cropping the image. By default, the Normal and Constraint to Image settings are selected. If you want to crop the image using a specific ratio, you can select the ratio from the listing shown. If you want to create your own custom ratio, you can select the Custom command to open the Custom Crop dialog box. Enter the crop ratio you want to use within this dialog box and then click the OK button. After selecting a ratio or creating your own, you can click and drag in the image to draw a bounding box with the specified ratio within the preview image. You can then proceed to finish cropping the image as normal. If you want to see a 3x3 overlay over the bounding box that helps you maintain image composure and proportions when cropping, you can choose the Show Overlay command in the Crop Tool Buttons drop-down menu. After you have drawn a bounding box, you can adjust its position within the preview image. To move the bounding box, click and drag within the center of the bounding box. To change its dimensions, place your mouse pointer over the sides or the corners of the bounding box until you see a double pointed arrow appear. Then click and drag to change the size of the bounding box in either direction shown by the double pointed arrow. To rotate the bounding box, which is used to change the angle of the image in the same way that the Straighten tool does. Place your mouse pointer slightly outside of the bounding box until you see a bent double pointed arrow appear. Then click and drag in either direction shown by the double pointed arrow to rotate the bounding box. Note that you can hold down the Shift key when rotating or resizing to ensure that you resize in proportion to the existing dimensions and rotate in set increments respectively. To clear a bounding box that you have created, you can simply select the Clear Crop command from the Crop Tool Buttons drop-down menu, or press the Escape key on your keyboard. 
After cropping an image, you can also select the Set to Original Crop command from the Crop Tool Buttons drop-down menu to revert back to the original crop used by the image. You can use the Straighten tool to straighten a crooked image that was taken at an angle. To do this, click the Straighten Tool button and then click and drag a straight line across the image where you want the actual bottom of the image to be located. A bounding box, just like the one used for the Crop tool, will then appear on screen. You can adjust the rotation, size, and placement of this bounding box just as you can for the Crop tool if needed. When the image is ready to be straightened, click another button within the tool's bar, or simply press the Enter key on your keyboard to accept the changes you have applied. To correct red eye or pet eye within an image, click the Red Eye Removal Tool button. If needed, you can then use the Pupil Size and Darken sliders that appear in the Settings pane at the right side of the dialog box to set your desired levels for both settings. When you are ready, you then click and drag over the red eye or pet eye that you want to correct within the image. The correction should occur automatically according to the settings you specified. If the program cannot find any red eyes in the area you selected, a message box will appear and prompt you to redraw the areas that include the eye and some of the face so that it can make the corrections. To access the Camera Raw Preferences dialog box, click the Open Preferences dialog button in the Tools bar. In the General section, you can choose to save image settings in either Sidecar XMP files or in the Camera Raw database by making the desired selection from the drop-down menu. You can also choose to apply sharpening to either all images or preview images only by making the desired selection from the next drop-down. In the default image settings section, you can check or uncheck the checkboxes shown to either apply or disable each setting that is listed. The settings are apply auto tone adjustments, make defaults specific to a camera serial number, and make defaults specific to camera ISO settings. In the DNG file handling section, you can check or uncheck the checkboxes shown to either apply or disable each setting that is listed. The settings are ignore sidecar XMP files and update embedded JPEG previews. If the second setting is enabled, then use the adjacent drop-down to select the desired size of the previews to update. When you have finished changing your settings, click the OK button in the upper right corner of the Camera Raw Preferences dialog box to apply them. Finally, you can click the Rotate Image 90 Degrees Counterclockwise or the Rotate Image 90 Degrees Clockwise button to rotate the image either 90 degrees counterclockwise or 90 degrees clockwise each time you click the respective button. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www dot teachucomp dot com forward slash free.